Well, well, well. Here's Mama Bloom's brood. Fink has moved into position both as Mama and Papa Bloom's son-in-law and vice president in charge of sales at the knee pants factory, which you know has a uniform department, a creation of Sidney, the other son-in-law. Just now we find Mama Bloom entering Harold's office at the factory where she finds Yetta. Why, hello, Ma. What are you doing here? What am I doing here, Yetta? Why shouldn't I be coming down here? Oh, I was just surprised to see you come into Harold's office. To tell the truth, I'm a little surprised myself. <laughs> To me, it looks like something from that movie, The Lost Horizontal. Horizon, Ma. One or the other, Pop will faint when he sees the fancy furniture. Just like Sydney's it is. The chairs you can't sit in and a filing cabinet. Filing cabinet. Why do they need such fancy things? Twenty years ago, when I came to see your Pop at the office, I had to sit in his chair. One chair was enough for him. <laughs> well, that's a little old-fashioned now, Ma. No, a chair is a chair no matter if you make it out of wood or out of gas pipe like this. Is he going to give a party that he needs all these chairs? Oh, no, Ma. They're going to have a conference. Uh-huh. Something new that your papa don't know about. Well, I think Sidney and Harold told him about it this morning. Mm -hmm. What did papa say? Oh, I don't know. Harold didn't tell me. Maybe it was that you shouldn't hear it. Uh, yes, sir. Your papa's heart is like a house, I know. But remember that you can drive a horse to water, but you can't get him wet. Papa likes the uniform business now, but other things I don't know. Well, Harold and Sidney are planning to take a lot of worry off Papa's shoulders. <laughs> yes, a darling. For 20 years, Papa's been in business. He likes to be in business. Then he's in business, he worries. He keeps his head full of things to worry about, and that makes him happy. Well, I don't see how worry can make a person happy. Well, there are different things to worry about. Some things are not good to worry about, but business is. If your Papa would come home in the evening, and I would say, Jake, how's business? And he would answer, business is better than it has ever been. Then I would know something is wrong. I would know that business is not good. I would know that he worries more to keep me from worrying. Oh, I see. No, you don't see. You won't see until you're older yet. When Papa's worried, then I know everything is all right. So you shouldn't take worries away from Papa. But Papa isn't getting any younger. Yet yeah, that's foolish. Who is? It's a good thing we don't get younger, because if we did, then we would do crazy things like we did when we didn't know better. Getting older helps. Oh, I didn't mean that. I meant that younger people have newer ideas about things. Only because they think they do. <laughs> Twenty years ago, it was 23 skidoo. Today, it's scrunch. Scram, Mama. So they both mean the same. We think them different. Uh, did you see Papa? Uh-uh. I came right in here to wait for Harold. Where is he? Well, Sidney called him on the dictaphone a few minutes ago, and Harold went to his office. Yet, uh, I, um, I didn't hear what you said. He called him on what? The dictaphone, Ma. It's there on her desk. A new kind of telephone? Well, it's like a telephone. That little box there? Mm-hmm, that's it. How does it work? Like a radio? No, you push this little lever down over the name of the person you want to talk to, and, and it buzzes in his office, and, and you just go ahead and talk. You don't even have to call a number? No, of course not. I could talk to Mrs. Field. Oh, not on that. So what good is it? It's just for inter-office communication. Yeah, maybe we should stop before I'm crazy. Hello, Sidney. Oh, Papa. Hello, <laughs> 
Jackie, huh? what are you doing here? Go home before you are crazy. Jake, what's the matter now? Where are those two Schlemiels? Harold and Sidney. And who else would I be calling a Schlemiel? Harold with Sidney, Papa. I know, I know. One is always with the other. And when they are together, they are thinking up new ways to spend money. Jake, don't get yourself hexed up. Head up, Ma. With an ex or a tea, he's excited. Uh, what for, Papa? What do they do, Pa? Do, do. Mama, I'm running around in circles, trying to catch up with those two. You'll get dizzy. Sit down, Papa. Sit down there. On a chair. We don't play games that you should sit on the floor. Better that I should than on this furniture. But, Pa, it's lovely. Lovely. She says it's lovely. In a factory, things shouldn't be lovely. They should all be business. Ain't business good, Jake? I don't know anything about the business. I have only been in it for 20 years. Sam and me, we have been here for 20 years, but we don't know anything about it. Sydney and Hal, they do. Did they say so? Oh, Papa, give them a chance. Chance, chance. Yet a too much chance I gave them already. This morning, I'm sitting in my office and a man comes in. A customer? No, no, not a customer. Oh. Sydney sees the customer. The customers all think I am dead. But I am sitting in my office and a man comes in to fix the dictaphone. Ah, oh, so you got one too. I didn't ask for it, so I get it. When I ask Sydney what it is, he says that we should talk to each other through it. Of course, that's what it's for. Sure, sure, Jake. It's a new invention. Not every Tom, Jake, and Abby could have one. Then why should I have one? To call customers, it's no good. Of course not, Pa. It saves steps in the factory. If you want to talk to Sydney or Harold, you just buzz them. But why should I want to talk to Sydney or Harold? Now, Papa, you'll get yourself a headache. My daughters gave me two headaches. Headaches that got names. Now I should have a dictaphone in my office. When I wanted to talk to somebody, I walked. When I wanted to talk prices with Sam, he came to me or I went to him, whichever was the closest. It's no, Jake, and time goes on. So the prices for these things. Look around you. This is Harold's office with his name painted on the door. Knee pants are not fancy, so why should we have fancy offices like this? The uniforms is fancy, Papa, like the red one Sidney sold. All right, all right, Mama, we won't say any more about the uniforms. Sidney is a smart boy. So is Harold. So is Harold, so is Harold. But just one thing they forgot to tell me. They forgot to tell me what a vice president in charge of sales does. Oh, so that's what's bothering you. Why, he arranges contracts for sales, and he sees that the salesmen attend to business. Then Sam is not on the road. I am. Who should tell us to attend to business when we own it? If we are foolish enough not to attend to business, then it's time we had somebody to tell us, but not before. Papa, maybe you can sit back now and be an executioner. You mean an executive, All Ma. right. Mm -hmm. The way I am feeling now, I could be both, easily. Oh, I wish Sam would come back from the road. I'm afraid to show him what is going on. He is selling knee pants on the road, and behind his back, Sidney and Harold are spending the profits on furniture and, and dictaphones. Maybe Sam will like it, Papa. Yeah, to the eye, it looks good. But to the pocketbook, no good. Oh, no! Yes, uh, what? Who? Oh, how'd you scare us? What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I just happened to see something in this magazine I was looking at. At a time like this, you have to look at picture oh, books. Oh, but look at this, Pa. It shows different offices of different executives. Oh, look at this one. Just like Harold. Let me see. Uh-huh. Just like Harold. Yeah. It's pretty, Papa. Come and look. If it's just like Harold's, I could sit here and see it. Besides, the, the price might be on the page. Just look at the vault. Finished in nutty pine. That's naughty pine, Ma. If it's like Harold's office, your mama was right. Oh, here, Pa, look. I'll read over to you. Yet I don't want to look. Why should I keep on hitting myself over the head with a hammer? Papa, don't get excited all over again. Now, here's an office you should have, Pa. Why should I have one like that? Is it fancier than Sydney's and Harold's? Of course. It belongs to the president of the company. The president? But I am not the president. Look at it, Jake. A telephone, all shiny with mercurochrome. So, a telephone like that should be different. If I quote prices for a job, a lot of knee pants, the price comes out of the other end of the regular telephone just the same. Does the price get fancier because the telephone does? You should have an office like this one, Papa. I don't want it. Oh, listen to what it says, Pa. The typical office for the up-to-date executive who realizes that his office is the first impression a client gets. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You see, Papa, you want to make a good impression. I'll leave that to the uniforms and to Sydney and to Harold. Oh, think how important you'd feel in an office like this, Papa. Yet, uh, I am important only to the knee pants business. Only the knee pants business is important to me. It makes no difference if I work in a cellar in a monkey house like this. Knee pants is still knee pants. But with the uniforms, you should have something match. Something like this office. No, 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 no. Jake, don't be like a Victrola. One no is enough. I don't know what I'm doing. Are you crazy like a March Herring? A March Hare, Ma. Yeah. I'm going to see Sydney and Harold. Say, do you know whose office this is? Yeah, the, it's Harold. No, I mean the one in the magazine. Whose is it? Isidore Cohen's. You know, he's the one who married Harold's aunt. Ida Goldfarb was her name before she was married. Ida Goldfarb? Yeah. <laughs> you should know her, Jake. You took her to Coney Island. I took you too, Mama. Yes, yeah, sir. <laughs> her husband has an office like this, huh? 
And he gets a picture of it in a magazine. Does he do as much business as I do? I do go for... I am going to find Sydney and Harold. You are going to stay here, Jake. Oh, Mama, I can't. Every minute I'm away from Sydney and Harold, they're spending money. Jake, don't make the same excuses. Fifteen times you said that and you stayed sitting there. But as soon as I mention Ida Goldfarb's husband and his hobbies, you want to go away? Mama, Ida Goldfarb's husband is not in the knee pants business. So what difference is that? A business is a business. Then what difference is the office? To me, it's a lot of difference. When Ida Goldfarb's in the argument, you are going to get an office like this, maybe better. Instead of the chairs being made from gas pipe, they'll be solid. Mama, two offices like this are enough. Jake, maybe sometime I'll meet Ida Goldfarb. Then you will say hello. Sure, sure, I will. But before I say goodbye, she'll say, how's Jake? She'll come here to see Harold's office. And then she'll maybe want to see your office. So I will take her down in the cellar where the furnace is and say, this is Jake's office. <laughs> no, Papa. Yetta, why do you have to look at magazines? Papa, don't change the subject and don't blame it on Yetta. I'm not trying to spend money for you, Papa. I'm proud of you. I want to stay proud of Mama, you. Mama, all I Wait want... a minute, Jake. A long time ago, I married you because I was in love with you. I still am. So I want you to have everything fine like other people. Mama, when you talk like that, then I don't remember one little word I should know. Jake, what you saying? I am saying that I should remember to say no, but I can't. Uh -huh. Maybe I should get new dresses, new hats, new shoes. But I don't think about that, Jake. If either Goldfarb's husband should have an office like this, you should have, because he's no better than you. Nobody said he was. Maybe other people would say it, because they're not married to you. You see, Papa, two people who are in love with each other don't need anybody else to tell them they're fine people. But other people don't know that. So the two people who are in love have to wear good clothes for other people to see from the outside. The inside, only the people who are in love care about. Mama, I don't know what you're saying. I'm saying you're going to get an office like this. Well, maybe I will. I think I will, if it pleases you. <laughs> I said before, it don't please me. It pleases other people. Oh, hello, everybody. Hello, Where's Sydney? Harold, Sydney? Well, he'll be along in a minute, Yvette. How do you like the new office, Ma? Beautiful, oh, lovely. Well, I'll have to get Harold started off on the right foot, you know. Maybe I could help with a push. Sydney, uh... How long does it take to get a office like this? Oh, not very long. Why? Papa's going to get one. Oh. Oh. Maybe you don't like me to have one, Sydney. Maybe you would like two pretty offices for yourself. Oh, no, Pa. After all, it's your business. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. You know, for a while, I, I thought I was somebody else. Maybe only a visitor around here. But you won't need the office for a while. Sydney, you are getting to something. Yes, and it will cost me money. Well, no, not exactly. Sydney, tell me, please, before I go crazy, what have you thought of now? Well, Harold and I were talking, and we figured out that the business is running along smoothly. Now, I know the ropes, and Harold's getting acquainted pretty fast, so... So, so what, Sydney? So we thought you could retire. 